Hey there, Mr. Terry, my high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher X video. All right, this video came through the video suggestions. It is from Good Enough, and the video is called The Deadly Traps of the Vietnam War. This should be brutal. Our original video link is down below. Make sure you are supporting that. By the way, if you're a channel member, you got to see this video early via the join button down below. That'll give you early access to all my videos, plus all of my old live content. All right, let's check this out. All right, Guerrilla Warfare was the name of the game to the Vietnamese. By the way, I wonder if this will involve the French as well, um, because people don't often remember that it starts way back with France and then goes to Japan and then goes back to France and the United States. The Vietnam War is a lot longer than just the US involvement. All right, let's see where we're going here. Let's start with the scary and slowly work our way towards the most horrific traps on the list. Okay. Number nine, the exploding motorcycle. During the Vietnam War, motorcycles were strategically placed in cities and villages that were predicted to be invaded by U.S. soldiers. The motorcycles were carefully rigged with explosives, and once a person got on top of the bike to ride it, it would ignite the trap. Cause Wait, their own? I haven't heard of this. So is this their own, like, like Vietnamese ones or like American ones that were sitting around and they rigged it up? Using severe damage or even death. Now, I can't imagine that this tactic worked for very long, as there are only a few sources online that even mention it. Either way, I'm sure never that they figured that. out that stealing and riding a bicycle was probably the better choice. <laughs> While we're on the subject of rigged explosions, I might as well cover rigged trophies. The Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese Army rigged quickly trophies? discovered that American soldiers loved to show off. It's true. When US soldiers took over an enemy base, one of the few things that were worth of any value to them was the enemy's flags. I saw that. I saw that so much. Um, you know, like we're learning about World War II, especially. It's like they just love Americans love plundering, you know, like Nazi memorabilia, like Lugers and flags and all this stuff. Cause they, you know, elite Nazis when they would take over their big compounds, they lived in luxury, right? And love that stuff. And it came comes back and just passed through families and things like that. Interesting. You think that would be something you'd want to have onto like a memento of a such a traumatic experience, you know? I've kind of wondered about that when I've seen that happen in movies and things like that. The salty communist army began to rig their flags with explosives, causing them to explode once they were picked up. Oh my gosh. But it didn't stop there. They would basically rig any item that they thought a US soldier would be interested yeah, in. It just don't touch now, anything. Thankfully, the communist army weren't bright enough to rig boxes of pizza and the Beatles records, <laughs> as the US would have surely lost the war. Number oh eight. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, this makes me, okay, if I ever get drafted into war, just remind me never to touch anything. <laughs> a rubber band grenade. The rubber band grenade was a deadly jump scare that was used by both the Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese Army. This booby trap was easy to make and was also very effective. They would simply take a hand grenade, pull the pin out, hold the lever down, and place some rubber bands on the lever to keep it compressed. Okay. They would then hide so the grenade in their huts, like an Easter egg. This was done since they knew that U.S. soldiers regularly burned their huts down, preventing them from returning. But for U.S. soldiers, this practice would soon come with a massive risk, since huts were booby-trapped with these hidden grenades. It explode. And once the hut was set ablaze, the rubber band would begin to melt, causing the lever to spring open, that's really igniting smart. the grenade and exploding. That's pretty. That's pretty ingenious, actually. I know we're talking about horrifically dangerous things happening here, but. That is pretty ingenious, man. The Vietnamese, is there, is there a people that have been better at guerrilla warfare in history? I mean, they fend off the Chinese, for example, for centuries, basically millennia going back in history. And then against imperial powers, uh, Western imperial powers in the whole age of imperialism, 18, 1900s, and beating consistently massive empires through all these tactics. And yeah, it had to use some in ingenious things here. This... Yeah, it makes smart. You can turn your grenade basically into like a, not a trip mine, but something close to it. So gosh, it, it makes sense though. Like wh when you're hearing about these things and obviously they're going to get worse about why PTSD, such a big deal for soldiers were returning from the Vietnam war. There's a, a, a psychological war happening here for all these things, right? Like you never know when something could explode or kill you or something. It's like, can't process that. And going back to normalcy after a war is understandably like impossible. Sending deadly shrapnel flying in all directions up to a radius of 35 meters. Now, a similar tactic that is used today is the mason jar grenade, where a grenade has the safety pin removed, then placed inside of a glass jar with the lever held down by the wall of the jar. Okay. It is then dropped from a drone. 
causing the glass to shatter and the grenade to explode shortly after. Just aerial Now, thankfully, here. nowadays this operation is performed by a carefully selected professional, which of course are all retired Call of Duty players. <laughs> oh, since they have years of experience performing under extreme pressure and handling an Xbox controller. Number seven. Do they really but use them there. I mean, I mean, it makes sense. Like I've seen that when you're looking. Does the guy on the left have it too? It looks like an Xbox controller. I mean, why not? They already perfected it, but it's like it's not a game though. <laughs> Forming under it's extreme not a game. pressure and handling an Xbox controller. Wow. Number seven. Foot traps. There were a few types oh, of foot yeah, traps that this, were used during the Vietnam War, do all about. which were very painful and could potentially turn deadly. Since these traps used nails and stakes that would typically have the razor sharp tips covered in poison or venom. But if neither of those could be found nearby, poop and urine would be the next best option. Still get infected, yeah. One of the most common foot traps consisted of a set of 2x4s that had long nails on one end. And when a soldier would step on the center of the boards, they would swing open, causing the side with the nails to tightly clamp down on the person's leg. Now another popular method was to simply dig a hole, place some stakes inside Alien of body. it, get the poop guy to cover the tips, <laughs> the poop guy. and then covering it with a thin mat and some foliage. When a soldier stepped so up- So this is the famous thing that everyone thinks about with battles like this, and it was in World War II as well with the Japanese, but like every square foot had to be meticulously searched. That's why like you have something like Vietnam War, and, and let's just talk about Japanese, you know, fighting the Japanese in the Pacific in World War II. When you look at like how little movement happened and how these like islands in these different regions would take like months, right? To clear something you'd think you could just walk right through and take it. It's because every, literally every step you take is something that has to be managed because it can be a trap, right? You already see here, like, like literally every step, they, all, they have a whole bunch of different things like this where you fall into some pit and there's could be bamboo, which can be uh, super sharp, can make that into spikes, but you're seeing that also tunnels that can have soldiers in them. Right. They pop out all of a sudden a few feet away from you. And it's like it's just not it's and it's not the fighting that like the United States military was like superiority could really shine out big battlefields and all the use of technology. But when you get down in there, like throw out all of those technological advantages and you're back to old, <laughs> you know, old school style uh, guerrilla warfare. It totally takes the advantage away of imperial powers. So maybe it makes a little bit more sense again how the Vietnamese have been. Um, so successful for so long against larger powers. On the booby trap, they would simply fall through the mat and puncture their foot, Ugh. which has to be one of the most annoying and disgusting traps. <laughs> annoying. Since you were left to suffer with the agonizing Painful. pain of a wet sock. Now, sometimes always the spikes anyways. were even set up pointing downwards. So raining. when a soldier's foot went through the mat, they would instinctually pull their leg up to avoid the trap, latching themselves onto the downward spikes. Eventually, the communist army began to see just how effective these traps were. So, they began placing grenades inside oh. of them as well. Oh. Number 6. Ah. The cartridge trap. Another foot trap that was heavily used during the Vietnam War was the cartridge trap. Oh. A very simple to make booby trap that consisted of a wooden board, a nail, a piece of bamboo, and a 50 caliber cartridge. It was then placed underground and covered with a thin mat that and some just foliage. Explode, though, now, as terrifying as it. this trap was, it at least got a cute little name: the toe popper. Oh gosh! Which actually just stepping makes it on sound it's not going to make pleasant. it explode, though. This trap was strategically placed on walking trails or in areas where U.S. soldiers were predicted to pass through. And when a soldier stepped on the booby trap, it would press the cartridge down onto the nail causing it to fire the round of ammunition into the soldier's into the foot, then, okay. sending all the little piggies to the market. Because, oh, yeah, you couldn't just, like, step. You don't just step on a bullet in it in artillery and it explodes. It still does have that trigger mechanism, um, something to trigger it there. Yeah, can you see why, too, how it's so common when you've, you have you might see war veterans, especially like Vietnam War veterans, uh, you know, like missing feet and legs and stuff like that? This is often what we're talking about. Not only did this trap heavily damage a soldier's foot, but it also served as an alarm, inherently turning oh, this sure. trap into an easy ambush. Number five, punji stick traps. Yeah, this these next are trap is something straight oh, out of an Indiana much Jones deeper film. Pits. The spiked pits were a terrifying booby trap that were generously placed throughout the dense jungle of Vietnam. This would fall under punji stick traps and is very similar to the foot traps we covered in the number seven spot, except a lot more gruesome, deadly, and terrifying. 
Instead of setting up razor sharp stakes to impel the foot, they were now designed much larger and made to puncture the entire human body. Another common tactic used by the communist army was planting punji sticks in high grass. They would set these up at choke points Makes where they sense. could ambush US soldiers and their allies. You see, when a soldier began to take fire from an unknown location, they will instinctually die for cover in the tall grass and impelling themselves oh. on the hidden stakes. Number four. The this, this really is just getting worse and worse. Like, I'm getting psychologically Oh, messed up and it wasn't even there it's like how can you deal with this man uh and it's so it seems so primitive right pit Ugh. now as snake, if literal snake pit stakes number four the snake pit now as if the spiked pits were not terrifying enough the Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese army would take it too far when they began to add deadly vipers inside of the pits as well <laughs> which we can all agree is cheating <laughs> OP. The communist army would also begin to conserve the stakes. Dig all, remember, I've heard of this, all is fair in love and war. You do whatever it takes. In deep holes Nothing and just matters. filling them with the deadly snakes. One of the most common snakes that were used was the yellow-bellied bamboo pit viper. Ugh. But U.S. soldiers would know it by a different name, the two-stepper. Implying oh, that yeah, after receiving a bite, steps. you would only take two steps before, you're dead. before dropping. That's dead. so crazy to think of a venom. Now, that's a bit of an. To think of a venom that powerful, where like two steps is not an exaggeration, right? And again, you can't see the snakes, man. They're everywhere. It's so thickly. Oh my gosh. Exaggeration. But brutal. nonetheless, the snake was definitely lethal. The communist army mixed and matched all of their traps and were willing to try just about anything to see what would work. Holes with stakes. Holes with snakes. Holes with grenades. No holes, just poop on stakes. Holes with poop stakes and snakes. It's like a snakes with stakes. This is like a demented, demented Dr. Seuss. <laughs> you get the point. Number three, trip wires. One oh, of the most yeah. terrifying and paranoia-inducing traps involved the off. use of tripwires. There were many traps that used the tripwire method, but I'll just cover the most common ones, starting with the can grenade. The can grenade consisted of a grenade, a can, and a piece of wire. The grenade would have the safety pin removed from it and placed inside of a can, with the can wall holding down the lever. A piece of wire was then tied to a base, then to the grenade, so creating rudimentary. a tripwire. And when a soldier would hit the wire, the grenade would be pulled out of the can, releasing the lever and igniting the grenade. Now, these trip wires were also commonly hooked up to crossbows, which, of course, shot arrows that had the tips covered in feces. Another tripwire trap that struck fear into the hearts of soldiers was the mace. Okay, now we're getting into, like... <laughs> ancient like indiana jones stuff you know going through some pyramid some tomb and arrows are launching at you but oh my god this was a large heavy swinging ball oh. that had wooden or metal spikes sticking out of it oh. which would swing down from overhead and slamming into the person who oh. hit the wire but wait there's more. more there was also the bamboo whip this was a bamboo stick that had one foot spikes sticking out yeah of this it. is like the stick would be pulled back stuff. between trees and held with tremendous tension tied with a simple catch that would release when someone hit the trip wire which would send the spike bamboo flying directly at the person there was also another trap called the raft this was a large, heavy wooden Raft? block that had razor sharp spikes sticking out of it. And when the wire was hit, the wooden block would fall from out of the trees and impelling the soldier's head. We just appreciate all the grotesque <laughs> versions of soldiers that he draws. It's very salmonella, right? But oh my gosh. It's just like everything's trying to kill you. Every step you take, you might get impaled from the bottom, from the side, something from above. <clears throat> you might explode. Number two, surrounded by landmines. Landmines had to have been the classic. single most terrifying traps that were used oh. during the Vietnam War. To put into perspective just how deadly and fear-inducing they were, we just have to take a look at one statistic. It's estimated that a third of all marine casualties were caused by mines and explosive traps. I didn't know traps. that. Now, just Wait. imagine casualties were caused by mines and explosive booby traps. Now, just one imagine third. the level Okay, so again... This is crazy, right? Because like I was saying, 
American military superiority. They got, you know, they got uh, helicopters and they got bombing raids and all this fantastic t- technology means nothing. Means nothing when you actually have to get down there. This stuff, so rudimentary, can kill anything. That's so crazy. And and of all the deaths and cr- crewed there, it wasn't big fancy technology imported, you know, by the Vietnamese, you know, from some other superpower stuff. It's not like the Soviets were out here uh, training them how to make these things. It's just like pure ingenuity from generations of fighting off uh, imperialism and knowing how to how to take the advantage a paranoia you would have with every single step by the way this is also why you're going to see tactics as the vietnam war is going to change where they're like you just got to bomb everything just bomb everything right you can't see anything because it's pure jungle that's where you get your grenade your napalm and your agent orange and remember when that those tactics started uh those started too it was so horrendous right obviously for the vietnamese population and then it also included like going into cambodia and the bombing raids there which is going to kill thousands of people destabilize cambodia and bring in the dictatorship of pol pot and the Khmer rouge and but you could see i guess why i guess you would say why they start using those tactics because boots on the ground stuff look at this a third almost 30 percent they said of people just dying from traps of all the different ways you could die in combat from that, it's like they're going to get away from that kind of fighting policy at all and just strike from above. And even that, of course, didn't, you know, obviously turn into positive results uh, for the Americans. You hit a twig, you drop and roll. You hit a pothole, yeah. you drop and roll. You hit a weed, you begin to question what you're even doing in the jungles of Vietnam and slowly come to the realization that war is nothing more than a racket where a handful of wealthy people get even more rich as they trade human lives for <laughs> insane profits. You get come a contemplative here. But of course... For real, I mean, a lot of guys came back drug addicts. I mean, you could tell why people are going to... Just to cope with this amount of drinking, again, um, uh, yeah, the drinking, um, the the drug addiction, just the, the destroyed mental state there, the war crimes that are also going to be committed. It's like, get the context of it now. All your boys will tell you to just take a deep breath, drink some water, and sleep it off. Now, one of the most common landmines that the communist army used was the DH-10 directional fragmentation mine, which was over a foot in length and weighed over 30 pounds. The DH-10 unleashed fragments up to 200 meters and was commonly rigged with tripwire. As for the unlucky soldier that hit this wire, well, I'm not so sure just how much of him would be left. Rip. But one thing I am sure of is anyone that witnessed this trap in action would never be the same after seeing it. Number one, oh, the no. rat okay. tunnel. All right. Okay, they're getting to something here. I mean, so a bunch of these things, you know, I've heard of, especially the booby traps. Um, but yeah, you, tying that back to what I was saying earlier about the PTSD that came out of this war. Number one. Would never be the same oh, after what is seeing it? it. Number one, the rat tunnels. The rat okay. tunnels were easily the most terrifying oh, traps the Vietcong ever there. created. This was not just a trap. This was more of a horror movie. You see, the rat tunnels were an extensive and complex network of underground tunnels that served the many purposes. They were also so small that once inside, it would be impossible to turn back around and made clearing them out a solo mission. So like I was saying, as the superiority of the American military was the air. And this was the only way that basically the Vietnamese could function was to get underground, to remain unseen. So yeah, these tunnels, they basically had to live underground. They would go down there, sleep down there, store stuff down there. And it was scary because, you know, if you came across one, uh, you very well, you know, are going to see or come in contact with, you know, like an enemy soldier. So yeah. Um, and probably the worst job I could imagine was the guy that had to go in there and try to clear out those tunnels, go down there with like a pistol and just with traps. Cause there were traps in the tunnels as well. Worst job. I don't know if they drew straws to figure that one out, but ooh. for the communist army, these tunnels housed their rest area, kitchen, ammunition, water, and first aid stations. But for the U.S. and its allies, these tunnels were nothing short of a horrific nightmare. 
You see the tunnels were pitch black, requiring you to hold a flashlight and only allowing for a pistol in yeah. your other hand. I know you, like, okay, there's different varying levels of like claustrophobia. And I feel like I'm pretty regular at that. But at some point, I don't care who you are, that is going to mess with you. You begin to slowly crawl through the tunnel. Bats will be flying past your head and rats and bugs running Ugh. and crawling past you. Ugh. But soon you Disease inevitably infested. come to a junction where you could continue going straight, make a left or a right. You might not know it at the time, but a wrong turn here yeah. could be the last choice you ever make. As there are many false tunnels, tunnels that lead to landmines, spiked pits, ambushes, and even areas where vipers are tied to the walls. <laughs> now you're probably asking yourself, what soldier in their right mind would ever volunteer to go inside one of these hellish holes? It turns out not many. Instead, the platoon just became what it was fighting against communist sending in the shortest soldier in the platoon giving oh, him a job that he never wanted the short king now don't get me wrong the u.s and its allies did eventually put together a very small group of soldiers that would specialize in clearing out these tunnels and when i say small i mean that literally and figuratively Who would do that as most of them were under five foot five. Oh. This small group of soldiers would come to be known as the Tunnel Rats. Okay, and throughout yeah. the Vietnam War, they proved to be some of the bravest soldiers to have ever fought, earning their respect and admiration from their fellow soldiers. And for once in their lives, they were not the ones looking up to others. <laughs> I was going to say, like, if you have those kind of jobs, you've and, and this goes for a lot of soldiers is like, coming to terms with your own mortality and death. Like once you, this is what they say, you know, I've heard is like, obviously you could freeze up, right? You could freeze up and just not be able to function, you know, when those shots start firing and stuff like that. And they say you have to basically accept that you're going to die or you're already dead. And then you can begin to possibly function and stuff like that. And that's, that would have to be like these guys, like, you already know. You've already come to terms with it. If you live, it's a bonus. You know what I mean? If not, whatever, you've already gone in with the, with the psychology that you're going to be dying anyways. I feel like that's psychologically the only way you could deal with war like that. These guys exemplify that. Oh, final thoughts. All right, so Vietnam and, and the war there was not scary enough. Now you got something else to think about. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, hopefully I was able to put some context here about how, you know, the Vietnamese and how this has become a part of their military history and has been very successful that for um, for them against large empires for centuries. And uh, this was just another one of those instances, right? Fighting the United States and earlier the French, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, but that's much ado about how the history of war and uh, shows you that technology isn't always enough and defensive, you know, fighting defensively always has massive advantages, especially when you're fighting against somebody that is not used to those types of geographies like the United States was. So another, um, another uh, interesting part of military history, I guess. All right, with that, Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.